Good day, everyone. It's Grizzly time. Today's story is a great story with a valuable lesson for us all, and it's called the Ugly Fairy. I'm not sure all of you will have heard this story before. Okay, let's get on with the story. The Ugly Fairy. There was once a fairy who was learning how to be a fairy godmother. Most magic and wonderful, she was the kindest and cleverest of all fairies. However, she was also a very ugly fairy. And no matter how much she showed her wonderful qualities, it seemed that everyone was determined to believe that the most important thing about a fairy was her beauty. In the fairy school, they ignored her. And every time she flew off on a mission to help a child or anyone else in trouble, before she could say a word, they were already screeching and yelling at her. Ugly! Get out of here, weirdo! Despite her being little, her magic was very powerful. And more than once she had considered using it to make herself beautiful. But then she remembered what her mother had always told her. My dear, you are what you are, warts and all. And never doubt that you are this way for a very special reason. But then one day, the witches of the neighbouring land invaded and destroyed the country, putting all the fairies and the wizards in prison. Our fairy, just before being attacked, put a spell on her own clothes and helped by her ugly face, she managed to pass for a witch. That way, she was able to follow the witches back to their den. Once there, she used her magic to prepare a big party for everyone, decorating the cave with bats, toads and spiders. The music was provided by a pack of howling wolves. While the party was in full swing, the fairy hurried off and set free all the fairies and wizards who had been imprisoned. When all of them was free, they worked together on one big spell, which succeeded in trapping the witches inside the mountain for the next 100 years. And for the next 100 years and more, everyone remembered the great bravery and intelligence of the ugly fairy. And from that day on, no one in the land ever saw ugliness as a disgrace. Whenever someone ugly was born, people were filled with joy, knowing that for that new person, great things lay ahead. There isn't really a moral in this story, but there is a lesson. We can all achieve great things, and we have within ourselves all that is needed to do so. We should not give such great importance to physical beauty, nor should we want to change only according to how others see us. It's a fantastic lesson for us. People should consider a person's attitude and kindness and not their physical appearance. Okay, so this one had a lovely happy ending, as promised. But not all stories have happy endings, just endings. Well, my friends, that's it for today. I do hope you all enjoyed hearing today's story. Bye! The Elves and the Shoemaker Good day everyone, it's Grizzly time. Today's story is an unusual story. It's a fantastic, magical story. And it's got a great lesson for us. And it's called The Elves and the Shoemaker. There was once a shoemaker who worked very hard and was very honest, but still he could not earn enough to live upon. And all he had in the world was gone, save just leather enough to make one pair of shoes. That day he cut his leather out, all ready to make up the shoes the next day, meaning to rise early in the morning to his work. His conscience was clear and his heart light amidst all his troubles. So he went peacefully to bed, left all his cares to heaven, and soon fell asleep. In the morning, after he had said his prayers, he sat himself down to his work, when, to his great wonder, there stood the shoes already made upon the table. 
The good man knew not what to say or think at such an odd thing happening. He looked at the workmanship. There was not one false stitch in the whole job. All was so neat and true that it was quite a masterpiece. The same day a customer came in and the shoes suited him so well that he willingly paid a price higher than usual for them. And the poor shoemaker, with the money, bought leather enough to make two pairs more. In the evening he cut out the work and went to bed early, that he might get up and begin early next day. But he was saved all the trouble, for when he got up in the morning the work was done already. Soon in came buyers, who paid him handsomely for his goods, so that he bought leather enough for four pairs more. He cut out the work again overnight and found it done in the morning as before. And so it went on for some time. Whatever he got ready in the evening was always done by daybreak, and the good man soon became thriving and well off again. One evening, about Christmas time, as he and his wife were sitting over the fire chatting together, he said to her, I should like to sit up and watch tonight, that we may see who it is that comes and does my work for me. The wife liked the thought, so they left a light burning and hid themselves in a corner of the room behind a curtain that was hung up there, and watched what would happen. As soon as it was midnight, there came in two little naked dwarves, and they sat themselves upon the shoemaker's bench, took up all the work that was cut out, and began to ply with their little fingers, stitching and wrapping and tapping away at such a rate that the shoemaker was all wonder and could not take his eyes off them. And on they went till the job was done, and the shoes stood ready for use upon the table. This was long before daybreak, and then they bustled away as quickly as lightning. The next day the wife said to the shoemaker, These little elves have made us rich, and we ought to be thankful to them, and do them a good turn if we can. I am quite sorry to see them run about as they do, and indeed it's not very decent, for they have nothing upon their backs to keep off the cold. I'll tell you what, I will make each of them a shirt, and a coat, and a waistcoat, and a pair of pantaloons into the bargain, and you make each of them a little pair of shoes. The thought pleased the good cobbler very much, and one evening, when all the things were ready, they laid them out on the table, instead of the work that they used to cut out, and then went and hid themselves to watch what the little elves would do. About midnight in they came, dancing and skipping, hopping around the room, and then went to sit down to their work as usual. But when they saw the clothes lying for them, they laughed and chuckled and seemed mightily delighted. Then they dressed themselves in the twinkle of an eye, and danced and capered and sprang about, as merry as could be, till at last they danced out of the door, and away over the green. The good couple saw them no more, but everything went well with them from that time forward, for as long as they lived. So that's the end of today's story. There is a moral. Hard work is the secret to making dreams and wishes come true. If we work hard and be kind to people, rewards will come our way. This is a great story. It makes you feel happy for the shoemaker and his wife, especially as they make clothes for the elves. Well, my friends, that's it for today. I do hope you all enjoyed hearing today's story. Bye!